Hey folks, it's Ray, DCRamerica.com here. And today I've got the Apple Watch SE, a bit of a fitness, like first impressions. I've been using it a couple of days now. I've got a couple of runs in it, a couple of workouts, basically to figure out if it's better than the Series 3, the Series 4, the Series 5. Obviously you've got the Series 6 at the top, but the SE is a quirky little watch. And for that, we gotta kinda dive into the nuances of all the features, primarily again from a sport and fitness standpoint. Uh, but the first most obvious thing is the display. So what I wanna do is basically kinda walk through the core features of the SE and where it differs from the Series 6 and the Series 3, because those are like the three in the main lineup going forward. But to understand that, you have to pull in all of Apple's past watches because they kind of cherry pick different things. There's some things that are like Series 5 features, some that are Series 4, some that are Series 6. It is what I think Gadget called it the Frankenstein or the Franken watch. And that is the most accurate way of describing this. It's confusing. And unfortunately, as you're going to find out, that's not necessarily a good thing. Okay, so you see right off the top of the bat, SE and the 6 have the same size screen uh, and the same clarity, look the same amount of brightness. It looks really, really nice, it's great. Uh, except in just a second, the SE is gonna turn off. And that's because it does not have the always on display, uh, which means that actually both of them turn off because I'm not touching them, but normally the 6 will stay on the entire time as long as it's on my wrist and it goes into that low power mode that you can see just the time there versus the SE. As soon as you put your wrist down, it turns off. Now that's the exact same behavior as the Apple Watch Series 1 or the OG, uh, Series 2, Series 3, Series 4, but in Series 5 they introduced always on display, this one right here, but not in the SE. So again, kind of the first differences that you see there. Next is battery life. Now in the case of battery life, all of them are claimed at 18 hours, but what I care about here is the GPS side of things. Uh, and GPS is like this stepping stone block down with each level. In the case of the Series 6, they claim seven hours of GPS on time. In the case of the SE, they claim six hours of GPS on time. In the case of the Series 3, they claim five hours. Uh, for the Series 4 and the Series 5, they claim six hours. So keeping the SE in that same ballpark right there. What about charging? Well, the big advantage of the Series 6 from a charge standpoint is the fact that it charges faster. So 80% in an hour versus the SE, 80% in an hour and a half. In the case of the Series 3, 80% uh, as well in an hour and a half. So the same kind of older, slower technology. Oh, and a quick note from the accuracy testing future because I forgot, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there. It really helps up the video and the channel quite a bit. And we'll get to the accuracy in just a second. But now we need to get to the core of the perplexity. The complexity with perplexion. It's just perplexion, perplexing, per, it's just a whole pile of confusion. Uh, and Apple is doing themselves no favors here. So. I started looking at things this weekend because on Apple's site, it says that the SE and the 6 share the same second generation optical heart rate sensor, uh, which I thought was strange because I started doing my math backwards and said to myself, well, wait a second, series one, two, and three. Here, I'm gonna show you this because this is, this is somewhat funny. Series one, two, and three have effectively the same optical heart rate sensor. Uh, it looks like they add a little bit of reflective material on two and three, but move out of the way. Then we got to series four here. Oh, and I know this is probably gonna get a little bit confusing and technical, but it actually matters. It has real world implications as you'll see in my run as to why this matters. And it's it's pretty substantial in my mind. So we'll look at the, the series four and you can see that it's got a uh, single LED in the middle there. It's actually four LEDs in the inside of that, but we'll ignore that for now. Uh, and then it's got these photodiodes around the outer edge inside there. You can just see them kind of reflect. Uh, that's where it's reading the information that the LED basically pushes into your skin. Uh, so that's the four. Series five is the same there. Uh, and you can see very, very similar designs in the case of series four and five, you've got the split portion on the outside there. So you see that kind of like a two half rings. Uh, that's for the ECG functionality that was introduced in series five. And then you've got series six over here. There we go. Uh, and series six is obviously completely different. And I know the reflections on this suck. I'm sorry, there's not a lot I can do about that. But you've got the series six right there, totally different. Uh, four LEDs, four photodiodes. The LEDs are actually two by, so they're red and green. So technically eight LEDs, uh, best I can tell. And there's still the ECG functionality on the outside there. All makes sense, right? So we've got basically gen one, gen two, and gen three. Now introduce the series six. It is essentially a series four and five. It's the exact same thing, a different pattern here because there's no ECG, uh, you know, upper half and lower half. It just goes all the way around. But that, which begs the question, why does Apple claim that they only have two generations of optical heart rate sensors and that the SE and the six are the same generation? They're clearly not. One, two, three. I don't really know. 
So I asked Apple, I said, what's, what's the deal, yo? And I haven't heard back yet. In any case, there's only two core like feature things you need to know about the optical heart rate sensor in the Series 6. Uh, number one, there, so you know what I'm talking about. Number one is that it does not have ECG. Again, introduced on Series 4, kept it on Series 5, it's on Series 6. It is not on the SE. And then two, it does not have the SPO2 functionality introduced on the Series 6. Okay, now before we head outside, let me talk about sleep tracking here. So let me just clean this whole situation up. There we go. Uh, you can see the summary of your sleep time on the watch itself after you wake up each morning. Uh, very, very basic information showing you when you went to bed and then when you woke up in kind of a very brief graph of the night. You can also see it in the app itself. Uh, so you can see here, different uh, kind of my bedtimes and whatnot over the course of the last week. Uh, and you can see the schedule that I set. There's a lot of steps with setting up sleep tracking on the Apple Watch. It is without question the most unintuitive experience out of any watch I've ever tested. You can't just like go to sleep. You have to set up this whole schedule and then doesn't record if you don't have a schedule. It's really kind of weird, but in any case, there's your data. So with that, let's go ahead outside and check out the accuracy of GPS and the optical heart rate sensor and see how they differ from the Series 6. So just a quick recap on the watches that I have with me. Obviously the Apple Watch SE. Uh, on this side here, I've got the Fitbit Sense. There we go right there. I've got the Garmin 4Runner 745 here. Um, and then I've got a Garmin chest strap right here paired to the 745 for heart rate. Up here, I've got the whip band. And on this side, I've got the Polar OH1. So plenty of options. So we'll get this watch started and then we'll just uh, talk about the run as we go along here. First up on our adventure today is the running rack. Hope we won't get hit by the uh, first time shot putters there, but we'll get us going. I'm looking here for GPS accuracy. Won't really be able to see that though until after the run, but okay, now seems like a good time to throw down some intervals and cruise along a 730 mile. Gonna drop down to 530 mile for a 200 meter sprint. Uh, and then I'll catch up on the other side, put the camera down though, so it doesn't need impact accuracy any. Okay, so with that, I'm looking for quick responsiveness and heart rate. So seeing it pop up. Then also, since I'm walking right now on purpose, quick responsiveness to back down to recovery heart rates. So those are the two things. So I like this little island here because it's a good test of these sort of small trails. In particular, not so much the tree covers or anything, but these turns like this right here. So seeing how well it handles a sharp, almost 180 degree turn, and if it blocks that correctly. So here we are at Olympic Stadium, doing a loop around the road that you see that goes around the edge of it, uh, home of the 1928 Olympics, I believe. And you can't actually run inside certain weeknights, but you have to go with the group or whatnot. You can see inside there, pretty cool. Okay, so this next section here is all about these huge bridge tunnel-like things, and there's tons of train tracks up there and highways and everything else. And what I'm looking for in particular here isn't so much that it doesn't lose GPS, of course it will. I'm looking for the reacquisition. So I want to ensure that these little gaps that you see in between, it doesn't get bad signal there. Um, and when it finally exits, it exits where it's supposed to and not somewhere like 100 meters away, which can often happen with GPS. Again, these little gaps like this, it thinks it's got it, but it's got the wrong spot. I'm back under again, so again, something we'll look at afterwards in the uh, Accuracy analysis. Some nice dense trees. Leaves haven't gone anywhere yet for the most part, so giving this a whirl. The Series 6 did pretty well in here, and generally speaking, I've seen most watches do pretty well in here, so don't worry. Just the firefighters practicing drills. Their um, scuba team actually practices there as well on the right hand side of the canal. They were in there diving, and then the guys up top there practicing too, so seeing a lot out here. Okay, so here we are, run all done. Uh, you can see there's a total time at the top there, total distance 5.58, average pace 7.36 a mile, average cadence a bit low. Uh, so let's head on inside and check things out. Uh, we've got the summary of my run on the fitness app. It used to be called Activity in the past, renamed as part of WatchOS 7. Uh, and you can see there is my run at 5.58 miles. Before we do that, I want to mention one thing. If we go down, there's this trends area here. Uh, this was introduced last year uh, at launch. and the problem with the trends is it requires 180 days of activity. That's absolutely bonkers. Like no other device on this planet, no other sporting thing on this planet requires a half of year of activity to get trends. Imagine if like in the middle of the NBA or baseball or football seasons, they said, ah, we'll tell you the stats next season. What? In any case, 
my run. There we go. So there's my run right there. You can see the same summary stats as in the past. Uh, you can see the splits if I expand that out, my heart rate graph over the course of the run. There's that first sprint and the second sprint right there. I can swipe to the right and see recovery. And then if I scroll down, I can see the map. Uh, and then here we can change the satellite mode by tapping the globe up there in the corner. And you're already starting to see a couple of issues right there. So if I look at the track, when I exit the track, and this is probably a good time to switch over to the accuracy side of stuff so we can kind of dig into this a little bit more. Okay, so here's a look at the data from this run. I've got the Garmin 745 with the chest strap uh, connected to it. And then I have the Apple Watch SE in there. Uh, from a Polar OH1 standpoint, the one that was up in my upper uh, bicep here, that one I apparently didn't press the start button on. Uh, and then the whoop strap did record, but didn't properly export to Strava, which is how you can get the data out of whoop because whoop doesn't allow you to export your own data. Uh, so we'll get back to that in just a second though. Anyways, optic heart rate for the first few minutes is fine. It's, it's cruising along, all is good there. You can see it's ramping up nicely. Very, very similar to the chest strap, which is good. And then there's that first sprint on the track right there. And the Apple Watch just spikes. It spiked it way high, up to 188. Uh, and the Garmin is at 178. I can tell you I don't have basically 190 beat per minute heart rate. I wish I could, but when we don't play that game, I, I just can't get that high. So I know that's incorrect. And even the whoop strap, like whoop is rarely correct. Very rarely correct. But even it knew that wasn't correct. And it said 176 for the peak there, uh, which is almost the same as Garmin. So, so no major issues aside from that first sprint on this heart rate wise, it was pretty close overall, but still not as good as a series six was. If we go down to GPS though, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So zooming on down here, uh, a couple things to note. One is we see the telltale Apple Mario Karting or swooshing or whooshing, whatever you want to call it, when it just ignores churns. Like, so right here, if you look at this little thing, the Apple is in green and it just like cuts through the trail. Where so the Garmin goes around and shows me going around and going underneath here, the Apple just ignores it. And the same thing again when we exit the track. And I purposely recorded the video of me exiting the track because I had a feeling it would do this. Uh, and you can see right here, that green line cuts across the edge of the track and then over the trees and all that kind of stuff versus the purple line shows me running on the track as I'm doing right now in this video uh, and then running up the path and over to the other path. Again, a telltale case of Apple just like Mario karting around a corner, just like it did right here. When I went to the island, it's like, no, I'm gonna go through the water. I'm gonna walk on water. I'm gonna be as Apple as I can, walk on water, then cut across the grass through the trees and over the top again without going on the trail. And that's exactly what I've seen in the past from almost every other Apple Watch, but something that they got away from on the Series 6. The Series 6 did this course almost flawlessly, like none of these Mario Karting issues, it just nailed it. And there's many other cases of Mario Karting throughout this run, uh, but those are sort of the, the examples of that. You can see even right here, cutting the corner, uh, it just cuts the corner everywhere it can. And the problem is that's gonna reduce your mileage in some cases and then overshoot it in others when it goes off to nowhere land. And that has a real impact if you're trying to pace for a race and you find out that you're either short or long on distance and you get to the finish and you're like, oh, I thought I had a, no, you, you were short and therefore your pacing was off and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's disappointing to see they didn't fix that on the SE when they did clearly fix it on the Series 6. Now, will that matter for everyone? Nah. Probably not. Um, I mean, it hasn't mattered from the grand scheme of things for the tens of millions of people that have bought Apple Watches over the years, um, but it does matter if you care about accuracy. Uh, so that's something you've got to decide for yourself and figure out whether or not those are core things that uh, you know change your decision on purchasing. Now, yes, I know that the SC has the compass and the kind of slightly more advanced air altimeter, uh, but when's the last time you used a legit compass? And when's the last time that you needed the altimeter on the watch face itself versus somewhere else and up to the second. Keep in mind, they all have altimeters. This one just has up to the second on the watch face uh, differences. And so for that, I'm like, eh, you're, you're probably not gonna need that either. So hopefully that helps you decide whether or not you wanna spend the extra $110 realistically for the uh, SE versus the Series 3, um, or if you just need to jump up to the Series 6, which in my testing so far, seems to be the most accurate watch that Apple has made to date. With that, hopefully you found this review interesting or useful or something like that. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there, or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology stuff. This is a busy week. We've got this review coming up tomorrow, another thing on Wednesday, and, and more later on this week. So. There's some good stuff uh, gonna hit the channel here shortly. Have a good one.